This episode of Super GG Radio is brought to you by our Patreon. Patrons of the show can get our Dogs of Super GG Radio newsletter, Super GG Radio stickers, a slap on your closest PC or bag, input on what we cover, game nights with the hosts, and even a chance to win a copy of an indie we talked about. Not only that, but 90% of all patron contributions go to the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. Visit patreon.com slash superggradio to learn more. What's good, Internet, and welcome to session 201 of Super GG Radio, where friends chat about video games and all things adjacent. I'm your intergalactic pilot through all the space wars, Eric Getty Gettinger. With me, as always, is famed magician Alex Arona. Alex? Alex? Oh my god. He finally did it. He finally disappeared. <laughs> He's going to kill me for that one. <laughs> lucky us, I guess. But not so lucky for trading card game guru and world champion Joel DeWitt. This week I play in defense mode and tap three trees. Three trees. Forests? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> listen. The idea behind this opening is that it's not anything specifically. Oh, okay. <laughs> not Non-script, non-licensed trading card game. Got Intergalactic it. Space Wars. Okay. Ah, all right. All right. Got it. <laughs> you Take tapped away. three space trees. Wars. Not to be I, confused with other IP, which could potentially get us in trouble. You, tra- you tap those trees hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where you get syrup from. Also true. Not where we were going with it, but also true. <laughs> uh, last and most certainly not least is Android sent from the future to enslave us, Alec Parks. Beep, boop, burp, burp. I mean, howdy, y'all. <laughs> uh, do, uh, do you also get sent from the future wearing no clothes? <laughs> you mean I'm supposed to be dressed for this? Whoa, whoa. He's an I, android. Not, excuse me. Not a machine. Not specifically right. 100% machine. Okay, listen. Okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah, not, th- I, mean, I was not inferring to any sort of movie or TV or video game franchise. Listen, license. if I need to terminate this segment, I will. Sorry. Sorry, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're leaning into it heavy this week. And you know what? This podcast is always a disaster waiting to happen. So looking, looking forward to it. Uh, we're going to toe the ground in early adopters this week. Uh, summon a Balrog? With the news, then dunk on Alex in the backlog blog because he isn't here. Fwah, fwah, fwah. Uh, yeah, sorry, Band guys. There. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we are moving on to early adopters where we play alphas, betas, and games I am concerned about. So, to go along with the opening and not specifically point out one particular intellectual property or anything, we did play. A uh, cute little demo stage uh, for what is it called? The Super One Super One Challenge. One challenge. <laughs> the Super One One Challenge. And uh, I'm not going to say that there's Goombas in it because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But they look a lot like Goombas from <clears throat> uh, Super Mario Brothers. Can I say it like that? That sounds right. Yeah, sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. But this game is in the perspective of a first-person shooter and looks gorgeous. It really does. So the great thing about this demo is that (laughs) they set it up in a way where... Have you all played Super Mario 3D World? At some point in my life. Or or at least are you familiar with the way those levels look? Mm -hmm. It, It really is sort of cribbing off that format where it's like wide open spaces that you're running through uh the jumps are completely reasonable and and not too difficult a lot of very just blank bright colors on on the landscape and not trying to be realistic more like building blocks type things Mm -hmm. and it works really well for this which is a first person shooter set in a mario like world 
and it really is just cribbing off of all your nostalgia buttons. So, outside of your gun, which is a plunger, yep, gun. For I some, mean, I've, you're a plumber. plumber. Yep. Plumber. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're gonna have a grappling hook instead. I don't know. Yeah, th- this is not Maybe. super Zelda world, uh, so <laughs> not, not gonna be that. But it. it it is funny how well this translates to a first person. Right? Player. It's eerie. <laughs> I like I, I did not expect it. I, I expected it to feel very like uh Half Life mod where it's this really ham fisted junky kind of thing. And the people working on this put a lot of polish in it that has all the appropriate sort of Mario sounds. They mm-hmm. they do kind of mitts and match from different games. Uh so if you got an ear for that <laughs> Like the, I got the 64 jumps. 64 jumps and the Wahoos. Mm-hmm. And uh, the the end flag has the Super Mario World <laughs> fanfare at the end. and But but it all works just because it is the right kind of mishmash that it's just that dopamine hit of, of nostalgia <laughs> each time you do it. So I, I, I actually enjoyed myself quite a bit with this thing. Uh, very quirky and funny. There are even pipes that you can go under and do like the underground coin collect. Yep. Uh, you can do the the sort of butt stomp, jump and butt stomp down on enemies. So you even have that as an, a weapon. And it just it was the perfect like little experience of this. Yeah, not too long, not too short, unless you're trying to do a speed run. But at the same time, you're getting a lot of good mario content in a completely new format so first person shooter and you can collect mushrooms and they will increase the distance and i want to say the velocity almost that the plungers take so collecting two mushrooms will get you up to the black bolt and that thing just flies it zips and it destroys anything and everything that gets in its way. And you feel powerful. Surprisingly powerful for a a repairman. You really do. There's something really satisfying and funny about seeing those plungers thwack into a Goomba too. <laughs> and <laughs> they stick on the environment. The yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is good stuff. Alec, did you get a chance to try this one out? I didn't. Uh, I had a difficult time getting the Windows build to run. Okay. Yep. That's the crux of it, isn't it? Yep. So, in the stage, uh, there are enemies, there are coins, your gold coins, and there are red coins. So, if you do choose to, you can take the challenge, try and collect all the red coins and the regular coins during the course of your playthrough, or, you know, like I said, speed run. If you do the speed run... I don't know about you, Joel, but like 30-ish seconds? Did you try mm. it? Yeah, yeah. I, I did not succeed, nor did I find all the sits coins. Uh, <laughs> funny enough, my maybe it's my computer thing. My computer chugged when I tried to collect the coins on the level. It is. This is an intense build. I was surprised by how hefty it was during the course of the play. But, I mean, it's so gorgeous. I don't know that you could really substitute it. I I feel like I'd be slighted if they took anything away from it. Because it's just, it is the perfect, I think, bite-sized Mario first-person shooter experience. I would love to see a a full game. It works because it has that kind of polish and attention to detail. Mm-hmm. Like you, you see sometimes those tech demos that people use in Unreal Engine to try to create a realistic forte Mario, and, and and they try to go to like the hyper realistic stuff. No, nope. and no, that's not what you want to do. <laughs> you you want to just do big bright colors, and that's what they did here, and it works. Yeah, this is. I highly recommend it if you have the time. Just go check it out. The super one one challenge, one dash one challenge. Uh, it's over on itch.io. It is worth your time, without a doubt. If you are a fan of Mario or you're even a fan of first person shooters and would like to experience it, it's just do it. I, I'm not going to tell you anything else. Just go do it <laughs> now. Now <laughs> you should just leave the podcast. Stop turn listening off, to it right now. Turn off Twitch. Come back in a couple hours. <laughs> we'll still be here. 
We don't have lives. We do this for you, nope. not for us. I, I'm kidding. Obviously, continue to listen. We need the, the listenership. But, speaking of dual lives... Nope. Not going to work. Not a good segue. Nope. Don Duality. Don Duality. We also played this... Uh, I am at a loss for words on how to describe it. But it is a card game in a, in a couple of ways. You take on the role of a up-and-coming Don, and you have a restaurant, and the restaurant runs in the top of your screen, and you have your underground business, which runs on the bottom of the screen. All the while, as you uh, experience this demo, there's events that happen in the form of cards, so you can upgrade your restaurant, you can hire henchmen, and send them out to, to perform crimes, but it is a balancing act. You are this Don, and you have to evade the cops while successfully running a front business to launder your money and send out all of your, your peons to commit crimes. I think that is an accurate summary. What do you guys think? I th Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Definitely. It's got, uh, it, it's a, it's kind of got some rogue elements to it, it looks like. Um, I don't know about you, but after I ran through it for a little while, I was like, I want to play a little more of that. I loaded it back up, and there was no save state, uh, so it's, it, I don't think that's in the demo yet, but it had an option to buy things basically with the silver coins, the illicit, the dirty money. Mm -hmm that you have at the end of each run. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think I paid attention to that. I wouldn't be surprised if it were that rogue style, because it was a run that you played through. I had, I don't even know how long I played. I just kind of lost track of time. This was pretty addictive, because the, as everything is happening, it keeps you busy. It was just like second it nature. It really did keep you going, and it um, the way the cards constantly got, were going, you had to manage, like you said, the business, <laughs> your gangsters. It was great. Th this game really tries to screw you with the cards, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Real, real, real bad. So, like, at its essence, this is a tycoon game. Mm -hmm. it's it's the kind of like mm -hmm. you are building an economic machine to keep your business perpetuating and growing like any good american business is and crime business or that's i'm pretty sure it's all, italian all business Whoa. is crime business <laughs> let's <laughs> business is a ponzi scheme that's you talk about I'm my saying. company <laughs> you're gonna get me in trouble uh, but yeah, the, the main premise is that you actually have two different sets of currencies. And so your, your mob people are doing hits to bring in the, the bad cash or dirty money. And then you launder it through the actual restaurant scene. Mm -hmm. And part of the structure is that every day you choose what percentage of the money you're going to try to launder in that given day. And then there's a cop meter. And as you keep on funneling more and more dirty money in a day, the higher percentage, the more risk you have of it going over the line, and, and that's your sort of fail state. Because yeah. you can actually run out of cash, and it won't quit you on that. You, like, you'll stall out and not be able to do anything. <laughs> but it, it is when the cops find you that that happens. And so the card balance is interesting because you are balancing paying for mob people to go do your dirty deeds while also having to maintain number of chefs, number of waiters, <laughs> uh, buying the tables and restaurant equipment. Oh, yeah. And and it turns into that, like, uh, almost overcooked thing where <laughs> if you aren't having the right chain of flow and the right people in the stations, customers get pissed and leave, right? And then there's also funny yes. red cards that are, like, native, native instances. So things like a random health inspection, uh, somebody dining and dashing and, and taking <laughs> without paying their fees, uh, fire inspections. <laughs> what what else was there? I, uh, there was an employee randomly quits. Yep, yeah, that was one too. But the, these are these, oh, uh, IOUs. 
So, oh, yes. so IOUs come due, and then you have to pay cash for those too. But there's also a counter card that sort of erases one of those off the board too. Uh, so if you get lucky, you get the right pieces in play. But you only have five cards to select from in a hand at a given time. And it creates a situation where you try to consume what you can up front, especially if they're uh, mob jobs. And then it's about mitigating and managing until you're ready to find the right thing. You can discard cards from there as well, and it'll cycle new cards in. But I also, if I recall correctly, for those hazard cards, you only have so many turns before it sort of blows up on you. And so I, I, it's not turns. There are certain cards that'll come up that have an alarm bell icon, mm -hmm. and those feed into the event cards. Some of them will have two, three, whatever. Okay. Okay. Uh, also worth noting, some of these cards cost the actual legit money, and then things like buying new mob members costs dirty money. Yep. So there is also this management of the two different types of income as well. But it's all about creating a perpetual machine. Uh, did you guys get in a uh, shooting contest outside the restaurant? I did not. No, I did not. Okay. Not something you actively do, but one of the hazard <laughs> cards ends up being a shootout outside the police. Yep. outside the restaurant and they'll actually show how many different uh gangsters you've got shooting out with the cops <laughs> so it was oh wow yeah it, it, it's a nice little fun attention to detail uh between different days they'll show you like a report of how well you did and they'll even give you like a line graph in terms of how much you've been laundering income and your balance position so it's it's kind of a neat metric for them to have there too just to see that trend line but uh nice and simple uncomplicated on its face it is about managing things that's where the complication comes from and i think it is so quick and snappy that the run based road light thing would work just fine in this 100 percent. i could definitely get lost in this and based on what i'm hearing there's stuff that i didn't even get to experience that um i would like to see a shootout <laughs> i'm sure that my people wouldn't like to but i you know i had fun i was upgrading my tables in the restaurant i at one point i, I bought some knives for them to use in the kitchen yes. i don't know what they were using before that but you know <laughs> nice uh attention to detail it's the small stuff but then your little uh, criminals your minions that you send out you know, they don't always succeed on the cards. It has a fail percentage chance, or it'll give you other status effects, like high risk, high risk, high reward. So there's a 50% chance that your your guys could come back with double the money, but also equally likely that they won't uh, succeed and you won't get any money out of the venture. But this is this is fun. I definitely wish listed it. I don't know if I should be ashamed of myself. No, I wouldn't be ashamed. No, this they'll is, find you. This is a quality. <laughs> uh, it's good yeah. stuff. Well, I'm I'm pretty happy with what we played this week. I don't know about you guys. Um, hopefully these are some winners. Oh yeah, I, I definitely got time sunk in this one, and we'll put it on my wish list. I add it to the wish list. Yep. Woo! Three for three. Too bad the super one one challenge isn't <laughs> wish listable. <laughs> Otherwise, I would I'd throw some money down on that. You should kickstart that. Don't tell Nintendo though. They might they might get a little po. Just, just just FYI to listeners, you can technically don't uh, offer a tip to the creator on itch.io. Yeah. So mm -hmm. throw throw a buck or two their way. A couple of euros. Well, guys, I don't think I've needed a break this bad since uh, we changed the clocks. Because that's still a thing. The government didn't fix it. I'm still feeling it. Yeah, Just truly. A zombie. I, every year, I tell myself, like, oh, I woke up on Daylight Savings Day, and I feel okay. It'll, everything will be fine. And then it's just, like, one week of misery. Yep. Day, day after day, just not keeping up, pounding coffee, having way too much sugar. Uh, I'm... I've got some work to do before summer hits. <laughs> so it Understandable. You know what will help you with that? Let's, uh, let's take a nap. 
We'll call it a break. We'll see you guys in a few. Hey news, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. If you really want to find out what I'm afraid of, listen to the end. <laughs> That's called a tease. Is it? There's no Alex here to spoil it for me this week, so... Man, I miss him. What do you think he's doing right now? Work. Yep. Yeah. Rethinking <laughs> his life choices. I, I do the same every day. I, I feel like that's a persistent beat of a drum, frankly. <laughs> yeah, man, you gotta do what you gotta do. And we gotta do the news. Gotta run through this stuff. Hardcore, like. Alright. Uh, can we do hardcore? No, no, no. I mean, we, like, I we not, were... not that kind. Come on. <laughs> 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 I mean, like, we have to make it through. I was thinking about just trying to run. I... I don't know if I have the energy for that because it's a like Joel said, it's a long week. It's St. Patrick's Day right now. I feel like I'm obligated oh, to shit. go drink somewhere. Don't you? <laughs> no. Tomorrow. I think we are. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? My, uh, tomorrow's my day. Yeah. Yeah. After last but, week, geez, I think I'm still hung over from whatever I drank out of that mystery container. All right. Really, let's do the news. Uh, kind of a light news week, but, you know, we're going to make it exciting. So, first things first. Sony's GameStop short squeeze film, Dumb Money, sets fall release. I, I had to have this explained to me. I had completely forgotten that, uh, well, like two years ago, when somebody figured yeah. out that they could play the stock market like a game, and uh, people got pretty upset about that. <laughs> so i guess they're gonna make a, a full movie out of that i honestly it was, it was probably a shining moment in internet history the whole GameStop people were thing. pissed i remember it was, it was kind of amazing like uh i didn't really hear about it until it started bubbling up on reddit but you know the the way that they were able to game the stop stock <laughs> <laughs> to to like inflate it in price artificially just because people placed bets that the stock was going to go down and then their debt got called it's it's kind of a wild instrument that ballooned into this movement and you still see piles of people talking about diamond hands and to the moon and all this other dumb nomenclature that came from reddit <laughs> when it comes to holding stock uh, so it's, it's. I think you mean stonks. 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 You're, you're right. I I should use the new common vernacular, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's it's a fascinating story. I don't know. Th this is clearly going to be a, a funny movie, right? It, it, if it has, I don't know. Well, based on who's what directing it, is it, it Seth is. Rogen? Uh, is it? I know, he's I know he's involved. Well, that's that's the other thing I want to talk about. This is crazy like star-studded cast here we got paul dano seth rogan sebastian stan pete davidson uh the list goes on and on so uh, i you know i don't like too many factual movies i i will actively avoid documentaries but this seems like it may be just kind of fun we'll have to see I enjoy documentaries on dumb, quasi-unimportant things, and I, I feel like that sort of hits that niche pretty well. It's very, it's very dumb. It has a cultural touch point. It's not that important. It's like the fire festival stuff. It's, it's, it's yeah. good guilty watching. You know that might be something. Nope, I'm not gonna touch it. It's got all the things I don't like in it. It's a documentary. It's about stocks <laughs> ah why is this so serious this should be funny exactly it, well, that yeah it should it should because it's stupid I, and there's a lot I, of funny to mine from that stupid i mean it's gotta be i look at the cast i know that some of those people are known for being able to take serious roles but 
Come on. Well, we're talking about Seth Roden. You said, uh, was that guy from SNL? It, he's not on there anymore, Pete, but Pete, Pete Davidson. Davidson. Like, yeah, he did I, one serious movie. I think it's, like, partially based on his life, too, so. Yeah. About I, how his father was a firefighter. I, I, I mean, it's got Kingpin in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. <clears throat> so that's a uh, that's a movie that's definitely happening. Do we want to place any bets on if it is coming out? No, we're not. We don't have anybody that's that's crazy enough to bet against it. No, that's it's it is a sure thing. Okay. All right. Uh, next piece of news: NBC. Uh, I, okay, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> NBC report warns of gaming councils with hidden racist and sexual content. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but every once in a while, the news will run one of these pieces where it's like trying to help and inform people. But in a way, I, I'm not going to say that it's like a buyer beware situation, but it's you got to do some research when you you go out and you purchase a gaming console that is not not a name brand so uh, the whole long and short of it is that this person purchased a knockoff snes uh the boxes i guess they kind of look a little bit similar it doesn't say nintendo anywhere on it, it doesn't say that there's any affiliation with anyone but it looks similar enough that i'm sure they were like oh 800 games this seems like a great deal for however much it costs but with those 800 games, there's there's some weird stuff going on. Not all of them legitimate. Some of them just downright offensive. <laughs> Boy. Yeah, like, like Pantless Modely in a 2D. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I am so sorry to the person who purchased this that had to learn that lesson. And you really do have to be careful about what you're purchasing these days. You never... Truly, you never know what you're going to get unless... You know it's for sure. Like, hey, this is the the brand new Nintendo SNES Mini. I, I yeah. feel like that's what she had set out to get. But when those first dropped, they're like impossible to find, and people were selling them for a crazy amount of money. But now yeah, she she went to the wrong mall kiosk. It I, was just. Yeah, yeah, these counterfeit things, it, it's funny because anytime you walk through a mall, wherever they're left, uh, there's always one of those places that's selling one of these boxes. And it is always a, oh, there's 500 games in this thing, and it's clear that their ROMs dumped onto a Raspberry Pi with uh, a shell that looks like a Super Nintendo or Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, as a parent, you don't want to assume... That just because you're buying it from somewhere where there's a physical presence, that they've done their due diligence or that no. they care. Because these people are probably buying it from a manufacturer that's just dumping that on there and moving forward. Or, uh, I, who knows? They might just be going to like a, a torrent site <laughs> and downloading a package they probably are. and just piling it on. And then if you've gone to torrent sites, it, it it's kind of like Napster. Like you're, you're playing russian roulette with the quality of stuff you're getting from there sometimes um but yeah it, it is a buyer beware it is a like okay this is your information but also you probably should have done some filtering as a parent before you found this out i at least in the news story she admits that she started to go through and look at some of the games and i think that that was the best possible scenario otherwise it, there's a, a long conversation that I'm sure has to go into it. If your kid gets into something like this, maybe they don't understand the context. Maybe they see it as something that's all right, and it is assuredly not. So if you are going to purchase one of these systems or you have not done the research on it, we encourage you, as the video gaming community, just just take a little bit of time <laughs> to try it. Don't... Use the internet. Sometimes that's a good idea. I'm mostly against using the internet, but good golly, Miss Molly. Go, go in the corner and think about what you've done. It, it, the internet, it's got things. Yeah, don't take my word for it. Don't use the internet unless you have to. 
or make your friends Google stuff for you. If only Alex were here. If only. Hey, kids, have you heard of <laughs> Custer's Revenge? <laughs> Don't Google that. No. But now you put it out there. <laughs> well, kind of like how we put out this article <laughs> news report about these counterfeit. Yes. Now I'm now I'm the person. That's, you're you're complicit. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's all my fault. Okay, let's uh, move on to more. I I don't even know what have we got here. Uh, I like this news. Shin Megami Tensei thirtieth anniversary. I assume. Yes. Live. Band of Shadow Shadows? Band of Shadows concert coming to Anime Expo 2023. Where is Anime Expo? That's exactly what I was going to ask. Does the t- phrase Band of Shadows mean anything in relation to this? Like, is that a, a phrase or terminology from the series at all? Uh, I'm trying I'm to think. I... I mean, you fight shadows in a lot of the games. They refer to the enemies as shadows. So maybe, maybe in that context. Hmm. Yeah, let's go with that. Where's Phil and Alex when you need them? Somebody could jump in here and help me out, but oh well. You you know how far I got in SMT five. I, I know that I am, you you sold I'm it back, not. didn't you? No, I have retained it. You did. Oh, you're a man one. after my heart. I betrayed you on Elden Ring. That's the one I returned. Yeah. Why? Game I, of the Year 2022 Elden Ring? You know, Game of the Year is really <laughs> relative. <laughs> nope. It was definitely Game of the Year. That, that is a that is a subjective opinion about a game that I'm glad that a lot of people appreciate. I, I want you to know that it's a really good game. Oh, I Even know. if you didn't like it. <laughs> That's the problem. I liked it. I'm just no good at it. Well, yeah, I can't fault anybody. It is something that forces you to get good. All right, so Anime Expo 2023 is in Los Angeles, so I'm sorry. I don't think I'll make it out this year. Uh, I would love to see that concert, the music. As I get more and more into the SMT games and the series, I, I love the music. And... I don't know about you, but even going back to older games, you forget some of the music and how it, like, you would be humming along to it for hours because it'd just be on a loop. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I I like it. I wish I could attend, but, you know, we, we deal. Maybe they'll have a live streaming. We'll be able to come back and and experience it. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, this is just a list of video game titles without any context, so I'm going to read them off. <laughs> All right, thank you. Kirby's Dream Land 2 for Game Boy, Burger Time Deluxe for Game Boy, Side Pocket for SNES, and Zevius? Zevius, something like that, yeah. From the, yep. SN, uh, from the regular... Uh, NES coming to Nintendo Switch Online. They just keep pounding these things down your throat, don't they? Not sure I like that <laughs> phrasing, but uh, <laughs> Kirby's Dream Land Two is a is a bid debt. That that's a very very good game. Uh, th- they've got some work to do to fill out that roster, but they're early on. Uh, I have not played either of Burger Time Burger mm-hmm. Time Deluxe, Side Pocket, or Zevius. But uh, they look like a pretty competent pool game, billiards game, and a, uh, a side-scrolling uh, shoot 'em up So, yeah, man, if they're on there and you can play them for free, it's the Game Pass conundrum. How much time do you have? Well, the the nice thing about some of this stuff is that a lot of these games are just obscure, simplistic stuff that you can just pop in and try for twenty, thirty minutes and just throw it away and say okay well i'm glad i got to experience that yep so you should experience all of them and report back because we could definitely use some backlog games no no okay no idea what you're talking about thank you 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Coffee Talk 2 releases April 20th to all platforms and Game Pass. If you got Game Pass, just play it on Game Pass. This is a, an Alex game, isn't it? Joel, you also played? I did finish it. I, I think Alex enjoyed it more than I did, but it's a very uh, nice, breezy, uh, I guess you would say interactive story like it was, it's it's really just like playing through a story making a few minor tasks here and there making coffee but like visual uh, novel fish that's the phrase i was looking for it's okay thank you yeah words are hard no uh, it's <laughs> even after doing this for like four years i'm like am i even saying this right yeah. <laughs> our our to- thank you alec <laughs> the to- no that alex. was oh. alex he's oh. just adding notes and swearing profusely so he's he's the one that wrote game pass 420 no don't say that you we (laughs) i was told that we need to avoid certain (laughs) phrases and information (laughs) i thought we were not 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 because from swear that would also fall under the category of not family friendly at least in that context so anyway Uh, Anyway, uh, is this episode just digging, digging a hole now? It's a throwaway. Alex isn't even here. He can't okay. rein us in, even though he's putting some very suggestive and, and, and offensive comments <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> well, uh, we've broken the fourth wall. Uh, but you know what else is broken? Jeez. Another Fortnite. <laughs> All right. You guys like Fortnite? It's fine. It's fine. I'd still no. still have never played. Will I? Probably not. But you know what's fun? Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield. You guys familiar with these characters? I mean, Cla- I think Claire's from a Claire's series. the lead of Resident Evil, right? In one of them. Yeah, the one I've played. Okay, so Resident Evil. Dose. Okay, I played that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's it's been a long time uh i do have the remake i'll just need to actually sit down with it sometime but hey man let me tell you you take as much time as you need to play that game don't feel Look. rushed but also remember them zombies are out to get you uh yeah looks like more skins coming to Fortnite. you can play as leon and claire it's so many just different like they threw in dragon ball we've covered what, there were Naruto characters in there? Mm-hmm. They are assuredly just... They can just use mainstream content as much as they want. They, it's how, and kids maybe are going to learn something about these characters one of these days. I'm, they I'm waiting for that De- Death Note crossover. I need to be able to play as uh, Light. Really? Yeah, just... just write people's names write doku in your death note and then just watch them keel over from a mile away nah you're gonna have to get good at that game i don't think it's gonna let you just do that okay so maybe you have to like mechanically convince them to write their own name in the book no that's easy you just need an autograph they, they shoot okay you don't have an actual gun but when people shoot at you if you counter write with the death note that counts as them writing their name in the death note and they die. You know what? You guys remember Satch Bell? No. no. Okay. Are you going to describe I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm just going to leave it at that. Remember how I was like, you know what's fun? Making other people use the internet? Think about it. I hope that that messes up your Google history. Okay, so now we're moving over to incognito freebies. For, for, for freebies. I, Free I think I need to... Insert sound here. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. I don't think we would have survived without that. I, I feel like we need to keep the, uh, the fire going for that one. Freebies. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We have... A couple this week. We're going to run through them. I've got more or less the description vaguely written next to most of these. Um, <laughs> Thank you, so Alex. 
we're we're gonna do that first one up chenso club over on fanatical this is a 2d platformer rogue like i don't know anything else about it i'm leaving it at that next over on alex is watching on twitch isn't he over on he he just wrote you're welcome (laughs) You you didn't see the part. Now, just don't engage. Over on Indie Gala, we have Spring Bonus. And I'm now getting even more text messages. Spring Bonus is a match three type game. I love these games. Warhammer, 40k. Gladius, Relics of War. The title says it all. I don't have to explain anymore. It's a Warhammer game. It's strategy, turn-based. That's, that's as much as you're getting out of me. Uh, and that's Epic Game Store. Did I say that? Nope, yep. I did now. Uh, over on Steam, we have Explorer of Argar... What? Argatha? Argatha? Ar- A-R-G-A-T-H-A. Argatha. All right, Explorer of Argatha. It's a first-person loot shooter. And there's one more loot shooter available over on Steam. Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, a Wonderlands one-shot. If you guys don't have that, I recommend picking it up. It is... I think I was able to squeeze like seven, eight hours out of it. And it has just that fun, wacky Dungeons & Dragons element to a otherwise serious borderland story all right we made it through freebies after about five text messages and another dozen push notifications uh all the while fighting alex typing into our word document so i will tell you now that i am deathly afraid of ais so i'm gonna bend your ear and we're gonna talk about that in a break sound good Yep, everybody's nodding. Thank you. And we're back. Back with the Backlog Blog where we play games. You know what? Where I have named this segment God of War Ragnarok Spoilers. Joel, are you going to play this game or can I talk about it? Yes and yes. All right. I got I- real hyped up over the weekend because somebody was texting me, giving me updates about where they were in the game. And I got to say, man, you're slacking because there's this other guy that we hung out with in college that I can't say his name for legal purposes because then he gets all excited and mad. (laughs) But let me tell you, he just got the spear. Did you get the spear? Hell no. All right. I, I, you know, the last time we talked about it, that that's where I'm at. Oh, geez. I, uh, We'll we'll talk about the game that I'm into probably next week or the week after. But no, we can we can do it. I'm just gonna no. I just mean the game that's distracting me from playing God of War. Right oh, now. okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna talk briefly on it because I've put in a lot of time on stuff this year. A lot of the games that I was able to finish are well. Let's see. The shortest one was probably Recursive Ruin. Hmm. Otherwise. Under my belt, I've got Star Ocean, Pokemon Scarlet, Fire Emblem, Persona 5. So I've only been playing long-haul games, and I just have more that are coming up. But I finished God of War last year, so I was able to make a a judgment call on it uh, towards the end. But I just wanted to talk about a few of the things that got me real fired up about it. And I don't think maybe that will help you to get back into it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or you'll just sell your copy and and mock me but no no know. i uh <laughs> i am much like returnal and shimadami tensei 5 i am committed committed yeah it is 
it is on my list, but uh, there are other PlayStation 5 games uh, using up my time at the moment. So, Man, I, I feel you. Right now, I jumped into Soul Hackers 2, mm-hmm. and as much as I know I should not like that game, and as much as I should be like, man, this is silly, I'm like, yep, this is this is me now. <laughs> so, <laughs> But God of War. So at the end of the last God of War, there's... I'm not going to jump into too many spoilers, but you find out a lot more of the backstory behind the characters, and it really opens it up for a deeper dive into Norse mythology. And Kratos, being the badass that he is, also uh, starts to get a bit of a conscious here. Consci- yeah, he starts to think more about his son and less about himself, and it's like the craziest thing we grew up with kratos just wanton slaughter uh but he's he's grown i don't know how else to say it but over the course of what we're talking 15 20 years almost 20 years or something like that yeah yeah he is he has become a round character it you know I suspect a lot of that has to do with the makers of the God of War series maturing <laughs> over time and and wanting to reflect that in their stories a bit. Because you're right, like the the first series of games are just murderous rampage mm-hmm. against the gods of Greek mythology. Yep. Right. Yep. And the way they, I think part of it is that there was a long enough break between those series and this current one, where people had a time to sort of have a new vision of what Kratos could be and the thing they do really well about the first game to the second game because I can even see what you're talking about in the first few hours I played the the first game he handles Atreus like a chore right or or a tag along he has to almost put up with and at the start of this game you see him sort of watching Atreus go into more like older teenage type years that kind of like uh not betrayal uh pushing the limits more yeah he's an angsty teen right right he's trying to get his independence a little bit and and push away and and i think that's it's boring that father-son dynamic of like having to manage that transition a little bit and him sort of seeing the the angry god in atreus and trying to figure out how to wrangle that hundred percent so it, he he has to deal with that all the while uh battling against what he and atreus believe is fate so in the course of the first game you start to find these legends they find uh, uh the name escapes me right now but basically prophecies and each time they find one they learn a little bit more about what happened and what is intended to happen So Kratos being who he is, he's looking for a way to overcome his own fate. And it makes for just a good drama. There's more of that dramatic element than there is just him killing everything. You still kill everything. Most things, (laughs) as a matter of fact. But it's there's some hesitation there. And that's what I really appreciate about what they've done to the character over all these years. But as... Any good God of War game, you get more goodies and you get more surprises and treats as you progress through. So in this one, uh, some of the stuff that got me really excited is that uh, Chris said that he unlocked the spear. And uh, Joel has not gotten the spear yet, but it is an unlimited spear. And when Mm. I say this, I mean you can throw it and then a new one appears in your hand. And then you can throw that and throw that. And then you can make all of those that you have sunk into your enemy explode. But the finishing moves, I I mean, I like the way that Kratos handles the axe. Uh, obviously the Blades of Chaos. But the way that he just runs through people with the spear, it is the Spartan way that he's been like avoiding for forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I really want you to get to that point so you can see just how much more fun they make it. 
obviously there's all of the optional bosses, the challenges that you'll need to go through. Because um, I'm hoping that you're going to try and play some of the side content. And it, it is designed to pretty much drive you insane. I, uh, so yeah, I, that wasn't a spoiler to me for what it's worth. The, oh, okay. The weapon. I, I, I didn't know about it, but that's not a, a critical thing to me. I, these dames, these new series of dames, it's much more about the storytelling for me than like the, the goodies itself. Uh, the, the blades were a really cool Twist. introduction in the yeah. first game because, you know, everybody knows the weapon, but I just didn't really think about them diving too deep into the history of the series that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and this sounds like a wholly unique thing, but is this like a quicker paced weapon then comparably to the other two? It can be. You know, the I would say that the blades are the fastest, but mm -hmm. the spear has some quickness to it, but it also has bigger sweeping attacks. So it's okay. it's probably like mid mid in uh, speed, but as far as damage goes, it's one of the lighter ones because it's a mm -hmm. piercing weapon. It's it's made to just quick attacks like that. But it there are perks and everything that you can take to make the stagger faster on it, and that's where it really shines because then you can do your uh, not finishing move, but your like high power move yeah. to knock off a health bar or whatever you need to. But it's just so much to do and explore in that game at the same time and it it is an epic and how i'll be interested the, mm -hmm. how you feel about the characters in the story i i i know that odin and thor are sort of at least set up as the big antagonist at the start uh what are your feelings on that you still have a long way to go when it comes to the story but i will tell you that I I appreciate what they did with Odin because he is the Zeus of the Norse pantheon and uh, he has a lot of tools at his disposal and he's not afraid to use them. So uh, the stuff that you run into, the encounters that you have with him, they, uh, at some times you're like, oh, maybe he's not so bad and other times you're like, this guy. Yeah, I I really want to punch him right in the face right now, and you don't always get the opportunity to, and it just makes the rest of the game fun. I I, I think it was Alex that described it. He said it's like the the Norse mafia because of the way that they treat those characters. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's a crime family with the everything that's going on. I don't know if I would describe it like that, but they are pretty good at what they do. So, who is your favorite god to encounter, and who is your favorite god to kill? Well, I, mm, I would argue that I really enjoy the whole interaction with Boulder in the first one. Yeah, that was good. Because just, no matter how many times you level this guy, he comes back. <laughs> Each time, just more, more and more mad. Uh, he's just, he's like a rabid dog too. Yeah. <laughs> just <'cause> he's constrained. <laughs> he's gone completely insane. It's uh yeah, with what happened to him. So in this one it would be Thor. I think that the fights that you have with Thor are some of the most fun. Nice. And I think it's happened I think the first one's like right off the bat. I Joel knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's a quality. It, it, they do the same thing with him that they did with Balder in the yeah. first, in some sense. But it, with Balder, it felt more like a, a rough like bar brawl or, or something like this. And this felt much more like a, a epic action movie kind of thing. Yeah, like, like he's a fantasy film. Picking you up, he's throwing you across Midgard. Uh, yeah. Like some nice like weapon clashes and struggles and yeah, stuff and that's one of the coolest thing Alec. Very so cool. he's using uh I never can get the name. His hammer I, I wanna call it like well, yeah. I always say like meow meow. <laughs> <laughs> meow meow. <laughs> and then he mew, mew. he hits it against uh, Kratos' axe and there's just a giant frozen bolt of lightning in the middle of the map 
for the rest of the game. And you can go up to it and you can interact with it and get a cool conversation out of it. But just that uh, idea that he f- you froze lightning. <laughs> is, that's so, is so cool. cool. Uh, and maybe that's the only time that that happened. Or maybe it's not. There's your spoilers. <laughs> now you'll have to play it and figure out what happened. Uh, yeah, so that's... That's all I wanted to do was just kind of motivate you into playing it again. I would really love to do a deep dive, get your opinion on some of the end game stuff to see how you feel about it. But it it goes in a completely different direction than it, what I was expecting, considering how the rest of the series has gone. From first game to this game, it is such a different experience that we've gone through over the years. So... Joel, go play it. <laughs> I'm on it. We're, we're ending the podcast early for that. No, I'm just kidding. You wanted to talk about <laughs> Rhythm Sprout. Well, wanted to is a strong phrase. I'm, I'm filling up time here. <laughs> uh, that, that is not a qualitative statement about the game. It's a qualitative statement about my interest in talking more than I have to. Uh <laughs> But Rhythm Sprout, uh, we've done, gone through a lot of rhythm games lately in early oh, yeah. adopters uh, between God of Rock and, and a few others here recently. And one of my common complaints of those is that sometimes you're so focused on that moving bar that you can't see or appreciate anything around mm-hmm. you on the screen. Uh, and a lot of that was just because, like, you're having to manage four, five, six different note lines at a time. And with how quickly it's going, it's just a lot. Rhythm Sprout decides to simplify things. And so you're a, like, an onion person thing. <laughs> and, and you're dealing in this world of uh, food kingdoms. And I'm not going to pretend that I remember any of the story. But uh, it's a very simple, silly premise to... Did you just describe Overcooked again? Food kingdoms? I mean... Kind of. Anyway, uh, (laughs) the the thing about this game, structurally, that works really well is that two things. One, there's only three buttons you work with throughout the entire game. Uh, you use one of the D-pad inputs, one of the face buttons, and then one of the triggers. And it is just one track. So instead of having to manage three different tracks and time it with that, it's one track. And it is just the notations happening in a certain sequence or rhythm that goes along with the song itself. The description that the game gives for the music is chill lo-fi walks and k-pop edm and hip-hop inspired tracks uh i don't know enough about those genres to uh confirm or deny but it sounds it is, crunchy i think that's what i would call it the tunes i would are agree crunchy. with that yeah i yeah. would agree with that description <laughs> and there I, I have not hit a level where it's been a bad melody or or song so each level has been an enjoyable experience with that uh some of the levels have bosses and so it'll start with a certain stanza of the song and then once you hit a certain threshold it'll move to like that like chorus moment instead where it'll change the notations it'll add things like blank lines where it'll try to trip you up on the rhythm and so you might have it be normally like da 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 but then the next one will be duh, blank, da da for the beats. Uh, and so it tries to trick you up that way. Okay. And they just they do a lot with such a little band of notation. They also have like a, a super move that makes you makes it so every button input is just whatever button you want to press. And so you don't have to worry about coordinating the three different button presses uh, for a few minutes there. All in all, it, I don't I don't have too much to say beyond that. It's a very tight package. I'm not far from finishing it, which is something to be said anymore for some of these uh, rhythm games. And I, it struck me that like if you were somebody that is trying to get into music a little bit, this would be a good starting point to at least understand tempo okay. and and coordinating beats on different rhythms on different hands. 
at a time. So my, my mind went straight to like, oh, like you think about how a drummer has to coordinate his left hand with his right hand in different times and beats. It, it sort of tickles that same uh, itch in a way. So uh, highly recommended from me if you're looking for a rhythm game that is challenging but sort of refined into something simple. It's it's up that alley. Okay. I know nothing about music, so maybe... Maybe this is what I need? Yes. It. No, you need Trombone Hero. Mm, <laughs> I, nobody needs Trombone I Hero. I don't think that... that okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll take your word for it. I'll just go play Trombone Hero, I guess? No. That, that whatever you do with your time daddy i uh <laughs> i sink you, you it into you. 50 60 hour games and then lament my life after i finish them it like, really just leaves a gaping hole <laughs> it truly <laughs> your, does your time, with, right. especially with the games that i've played like man i miss this i played persona 5 three times now in my life I still want to go back and play it again. <laughs> Stupid. Is, is that your forever game? Is that what... That I don't know is? that it is, but... It, you know, there's other stuff that helps with it, but yeah. Alright, Rhythm Sprout. Check it out. What are you playing it on? I'm playing it on Switch, but it's okay. out for just about everywhere. Alright. Hey, but if it plays on the Switch... Mobile gaming! Yes, Facts. indeed. All right, so uh, I think we did pretty good without our fearless leader this week. Uh, so we'll head into the uh, last segment, One Last Thing. And this week's One Last Thing is brought to you by waiting for a game to drop in price just so you can buy it, not to play it. hey oh, Looking at you, Forspoken. <laughs> yeah. I, I was surprised to see the conversation like, I'm going to wait until this is 30 and then somebody else going, I'm going to wait till it's 20. And all I could think was, man, neither of you guys are going to play this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, it's just a game to have. Yeah. I suspect it might get down to 35 by Black Friday. And if that's the case, that might be like my tipping point. But we'll, we'll see. I think it'll be 30 by then. We're, what, eight months away? Yeah. And if they're they're yeah. dropping it, eh, I think 30's reasonable, but I don't think that 20 seems like it's a far cry. Well, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, <clears throat> my one last thing. Uh, yeah, I, I think I have to go back to Soul Hackers 2. This game, shouldn't be enjoying it. Am I? Definitely more. More than I am allowed to. Uh, it's, it is a... Shin Megami Tensai game, so it's got all those characters, those monsters that you're familiar with, but this in some ways it's more forgiving, in other ways it's uh, not so much, but each of your characters can swap out uh, whichever monster they want to have equipped and the story is kind of fun if not extremely shallow, so what's going to happen with that? Check back in and maybe I'll drop 20 hours into it this weekend no alex so now it's joel the last of us part one that's what i've been playing instead of god of war is this the new rebuilt for yes it is yes it is i uh i was able to get it for cheap <laughs> so it was very much a okay i'll i'll give this another go because we did do this for video game homework way uh -huh. back when and i recall not being that jazzed about the gameplay and I think I figured it out. I, th I think you have to sort of lean into the struggle of it and just understand that that's part of the experience you're looking for and uh, really, really working to figure out your stealth. So uh, chipping and away slowly at it. Just it got past uh, Bill's town. So we'll man, keep going. Good stuff. I assume that uh, that Last of Us podcast you guys are doing, you talked about the finale? What podcast? Exactly. Okay. Alec. <laughs> uh, I've just been uh, playing Metroid Prime. Going to keep checking away at that. Ooh. That's it? You don't want to add in a second one last thing? 
Um, you know, no, I don't. <laughs> this is the shortest one last thing we've ever had. Brought to you by Daylight Savings Time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Don't Save ten percent on Poggers by entering code Good Demon. <laughs> well, it's drink Poggers. Drink crap. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa! We made it to the end. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh, all right. Episode's over. <laughs> <laughs> this is like when you're on your perfect run and you're like all right just don't biff it on the last boss and then we lost to the credits boss <clears throat> you get that bad random yep we got the bad ending <laughs> yeah it's uh it's your hades run where you've made it all the way to the final room and then you get swarmed by that giant rat oh. you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah because it's, it's, it's yeah okay yeah. It's, <laughs> it's super it's super ghouls and ghosts when you get to the end and they say you have to play it all over again with the bracelet weapon oh yeah 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 you, you know that is that just a me experience it might be but i i am it aware is. of this okay uh power cords did the same thing to me it was like oh you made it to the end but you didn't get any of the secret relics and then all of the characters you fade out and they all uh do a unique hand gesture to the guy hmm. because you have to go all the way back to the beginning so man that was rough uh all right well that'll be it for this week's episode of super gg radio before we go you can find us on twitter at super gg radio and twitch.tv slash super gg radio where you know we got a lot of stuff going on uh most mondays alex is still plugging through his backlog I'm not sure if he's still working on Kakarot, but he was pretty close to the end. I'm hoping he can finish that guy. Tuesdays, Alex uses it for some Skater XL and, and Dope Tunes, I think as the kids refer to them. Uh, otherwise... Slick Beats. Uh, what did he say? Slick okay. Beats. Slick Beats. That too. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how to refer to music. I'm not going to lie. I don't either. I just stick with the crunchy stuff. Yeah, I like saying that. I don't think people call it that, though. Thursdays, you might be watching us live for our podcast. That's right. We have an audio and video format of this podcast. Thank you, Twitch. Uh, Saturdays, Joel and Kelly are escape. Doing some, I, I want to do Escape Academy, but All it's right. going to... It's going to be contingent on energy levels here. Mm. This week. We, we, uh, the only thing we were going to be streaming on Wednesday if we did it was us sleeping on the couch. So it, <laughs> if, if you were wondering what happened to Wednesday's stream, that, that's your answer. Ouch. Okay. Well, you know, it happens to the best of us. Once again, it's like we should be depending on a, a government body to just once and for all abolish time changes. But, you know, maybe... Uh, Maybe in a few years, because they didn't bring it up again. Whatever. Uh, that's me complaining about the government. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I, I think that's uh, that's it. So if you'd like to reach us with questions or input, our email address is mail at superggradio.com. And provide us a review on iTunes or the podcast app of your choice. Thanks for listening, and good game, Alec. Good game. And GG Joel. Good day. And GG Alex. Oh.